Hey everybody, Straight Gate Apologetics here. Hebrews 13, 24. Salute all the saints. And today we have quite the intriguing topic to discuss. But first. No, I'm not sponsored by any sparkling water brands. But if you're out there, the Lord said he that is thirsty, okay? And so that very topic is this. Is being gay a sin? Well, here we go. GotQuestions.org They have helped me so much along my own personal journey. Whenever I had a question, who is Jesus? Is Jesus God? What's the difference between Catholic and Protestant? All of the answers to these questions are on GotQuestions.org And no, I am not sponsored by them or LaCroix. I just love them both. So let's get into today's video with one of those questions and it is this. Is being gay a sin? Uh, great video. Thanks for coming. That was it. Obviously, yes, it is a sin. But let's explore this topic a bit more thoroughly and see what Got Questions has got to say. Is being gay a sin? I was thinking about jumping into a volcano later. I don't know. Trying to fall between some helicopter blades. Is eating glass a good idea? Have you read this thing? Sin and bad ideas go hand in hand, folks. Let's get back. In order to answer the question, is being gay a sin, we need to challenge some assumptions upon which the question is based. Within the past 50 years, the term gay, as applied to homosexuality, has exploded into mainstream culture. What a choice of words, exploded. And we are told that Bad being gay words. is as much outside one's control as being short or having blonde hair. Yeah, totally. So the question is worded in a loaded way and impossible to adequately answer in that form. We need to break this question up and deal with each piece separately. Let's do it. Have you heard of Sodom and Gomorrah? Beep. Rather than ask, is being gay a sin? We need to ask, is it sinful to have same-sex attractions? And is it sinful to engage in homosexual activities because of those attractions? Let's see what the Bible has to say about that. But first, my opinions. The question that I would truly ask everyone is this. Not so much is it a sin to be homosexual or to engage in homosexual activities. What we should rather be asking is this. Is homosexuality acceptable under the New Testament under grace? The answer is still clearly it is not. We're judging by God's standards, not the world's. The world would say, mm, maybe 50-50, but we're going by the highest moral authority, which is God and his revealed word. Let's check out what the Bible has to say on this. Leviticus 20.13 If a man has sexual relations with a man, as one does with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. They are to be put to death, their blood will be on their hands. Romans 1.27 In the same way, the men also abandoned their natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. If the Lord Jesus Christ himself resurrected from the dead, meets Saul on the road to Damascus, and changes him in that moment into Paul, one of the most influential people other than Jesus himself in the entire world. And he tells him to write down through the Holy Ghost indwelling him, they are shameful acts that they have committed with other men. Do you think Jesus is condoning these things? The words of Romans aren't just Paul's letters. They are the very penmanship of Jesus Christ himself. For he that is joined with the Lord is one spirit. The Bible is full of scriptures that speak against fornication and homosexuality and any kind of immoral sexual activity because the Bible is our standard of morality. So we judge based upon that. So no matter how you look at it, homosexuality is not 
okay with Jesus. So let's get back and see what Got Questions has got to say. Concerning the first question, is it sinful to have same-sex attractions? The answer is complicated. First, we should probably distinguish between actively sinning and passively being tempted. Being tempted is not a sin. Jesus was tempted, but he never sinned. Eve was tempted in the garden, and the forbidden fruit definitely appealed Thanks, to Eve. her. But it seems that she did not actually sin until she took the fruit and ate it. A struggle with temptation may lead to sin, but the temptation itself is not a sin. The problem with same-sex attraction, or the feeling of being gay, is that it is an attraction to something God has forbidden. And it's not our any way, desire guys. for something sinful it's ultimately has its roots in sin. Our natures have been so infected with sin that what is evil often looks good to us. Sin causes us to see the world and our own actions through a warped perspective. Our thoughts, desires, and dispositions are all affected. Scripture says we are sinners by nature, so same-sex attraction per se is not always an active willful sin, but it springs from the sinful nature. Same-sex attraction is always, on some level, an expression of the flesh. Let's pause right there. Go! Let's go! You guys will learn I'm a goofball. So he just said something super profound. Same-sex attraction, or even regular attraction, on some level, is always going to be a matter of the flesh. It's going to be part of those three things that are not of God. The pride of life, the lust of the eyes, and the lust of the flesh. So a lot of times these multi-lettered acronyms, BTQs, often say something along these lines. Well, it's love. I love this person. I am in love with them. Therefore, God doesn't care if I do some type of sexual activity with them or some type of intimate activity. Because truly, I believe sex, real sex, is only between a man and a woman. This is a perversion of the flesh. You might care for someone but that doesn't mean that that is love according to the word of God. Love according to the word of God means you follow what Jesus said to do. And Jesus mentioned that by loving him and fulfilling the law, you actually are upholding the law because love doesn't do the things that the law forbade you to do anyhow. You don't kill, you don't lie, you don't murder, you don't steal, you don't fornicate, you don't have male and male sexual interactions and vice versa, uh, female and female. You don't have men becoming women and women becoming men. You're defying the creation. You're defying God in these moments. You're basically saying uh, a big F you to the man upstairs by saying, I'm going to take what you gave me. I'm going to use it improperly the way that pleases me. Now there is a caveat to this. God in his vast love for all of humanity has given us good ways to fulfill these desires. After all, God himself, the Lord Jesus, made us who we are. He made us physical beings. He made us sexual beings. He made it feel good to have a sexual relationship. He simply wants us to do that by the rules he's put in place. It's like playing Monopoly and somebody just comes along and says, I can go here and buy this and do that and do that and do this one. Do not pass go. Do not collect $500. You can't just come along and start making up a new rule set when everybody else is playing the game properly. God has given us a way to satisfy the urges and the lustful nature of our flesh, but he wants us to do it under the union and the rule set that he's put in place. So if you do it another way, you are not for Jesus. You don't love Jesus. You're going against what Jesus said. That being said, I do know how extremely difficult and hard it is to deny your flesh. We all struggle with it every single day, looking at a girl, fighting off the urge to do physical actions, not seeking meaningless and unfruitful relationships, seeking something that might be enduring, uh, certainly not having a sexual relationship until marriage, which I have failed at many times. I'm certainly not perfect, and I was never called to be perfect, but I was called to try after I met Jesus. It's been a long journey of learning how to take up my cross daily, deny myself, and follow him. Let's keep going and see what Got Questions has. Sinful human beings living in a sinful world are pelted with curiosities interests, and opportunities that would lead us further from God. Our world is filled with forbidden fruits, 
including the enticement to be gay. Pause for one second. Pause. Just because you're a Christian does not mean Satan is not going to target your mind to try to make you think in a confusing way. I can't stress this enough. Be prepared with the Word of God to defend yourself by rebuking Satan and casting down imaginations. Knowing this, not everything that goes on in here is your spirit. The enemy is always trying to work on your mind to do some kind of wicked thing. Jesus has equipped you with his word, not only fighting for you, but he's having you understand what's coming. We know the wiles of the enemy and his tactics that he uses. He tries to persecute the mind and even the flesh at time. So let us be armed with the word of God and we will know what to expect. Let's get back into it. A happily married man can be suddenly smitten with attraction for his new associate and wrestle with those feelings every day. A sober alcoholic can struggle with the ongoing desire to drink that was me. even years after he becomes clean. Those does I will not partake of the fruit of the vine till I see my father in heaven and drink it with him anew. That's what I said every single day, and I still say it every single day. Those desires do not represent an active choice to sin, although they stem from the sinful nature. They are part of being a fallen creature living in a fallen world. Some people who admit to having thoughts of being gay are, for a variety of reasons, not romantically attracted to members of the opposite sex. Instead, they yearn for intimacy with someone of their own gender. The causes for this same-sex attraction, humanly speaking, are varied and under discussion. But the fact remains that this temptation is real. True. Many who struggle with same-sex attraction report suffering through years of wishing things were different. People may not always be able to control how or what they feel, but they can control what they do with those feelings. Let's pause there real quick. And some of the stuff we've, we've already said, and you know, I do this in my day-to-day -day walk as well. But I got one question for anybody that struggles with lust or any homosexual tendencies. Would you do that with Jesus? Or even better yet, would you want the Lord thy God to walk in on you doing those things? And would you feel holy and clean and pure and exalted for performing those actions? If you answered yes to those, you're a liar. There is no way you would feel the right way or want to perform those things to your God who is above all, who knows every intricate detail of why life is beautiful and to say that, Doing these things that are of an unnatural nature and often very disgusting in many, many ways. Stealing from the glory of a man and a woman by turning what they had originally intended to be against each other. Using things in improper ways would make you feel like an utter wretched person. And it should, because that means you still have a soul worth saving. I certainly wouldn't want Jesus walking in on me while I was watching pornography. So truly let your soul awaken to that fact that God is holy and he already showed us even more so in his word of what he wants us to do and how he wants us to properly incorporate sexuality into our lives. Let's keep going. And we all have the responsibility to resist temptation. We must all be transformed by the renewing of our minds and take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Amen. The second part of this question, is it sinful to engage in homosexual activities because of same-sex attractions, has a more straightforward answer. Yes, Being it's a sin. Being drawn toward a morally forbidden relationship is not an active sin. It is a temptation. Sin occurs when we dwell upon the wrong thoughts. The temptation spawns, or when we yield to the temptation. Feeling a same-sex attraction is not an act of willful sin, but yielding to that proclivity and engaging in homosexual relations is. True. Our culture assures homosexuals that they were born gay, and that confused sexuality is to be celebrated, not overcome. Thus, we have an entire generation of children and teens who never knew a time when homosexuality was rightly considered abnormal. It's abnormal. In elementary and middle schools, it is now fashionable That's to terrible. call oneself gay or bi or use any it's, number of other gotta, faddish sexual labels without any that. real understanding of their meaning or of the moral and eternal implications. We are all sinners, born with a nature that wants only to please itself. The sinful desires within us vary from person to person, 
but the root is the same. When we realize how broken we are and that we cannot have fellowship with a holy God in such a deplorable condition, we gratefully accept the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross for us. He paid the price that we owed to God for our treason against our Creator. He also paid the penalty for the sin of homosexuality, just as he did for pride, rape, adultery, and theft. Those sins and a thousand more are what keep us from God and sentence us to an eternity without him. Boom. So we're going to stop the video right there. There's plenty more that we can go into, but I kind of want to finish it up with this. Is homosexuality a sin according to the word of God? Absolutely. Is homosexuality an acceptable practice under the covenant of the New Testament under grace? Absolutely not. Did Jesus ever advocate for homosexuality by having a position of silence? Hence, he didn't address it, therefore it's okay. Absolutely not. Go play your word game somewhere else. So there's a lot of other questions like what are the consequences? Are these people saved if they believe? Will they come into some kind of judgment? Maybe they just don't have a great relationship with God right now. These questions all can be answered in the Word of God, and certainly I could do a video later on addressing these in a more single file fashion. What I want to address is just a little bit more about my personal story with lust. So I'm not a man as though I'm going to lie to you. I don't want to be a pastor and a minister as though I'm going to act like I'm coming from some lofty position as if I've never sinned nor faltered. I am the chief among sinners again, Paul. I'll give you a run for your money any day. Drug addiction, alcoholism, excessive pornography, all of the pornography, bad choices, sex outside of marriage, sexual misconduct. I have done it all. I have done all kinds of wrong things when it comes to sex. I have not followed the commandments of the Lord. I have not done these things even remotely closely to how Jesus has asked me to in my previous life. And even after I've met Jesus, I've made more mistakes than I would have ever cared to make. Being someone who is called of God, who has met God personally, and calls himself a Christian. The purpose of my confession is not to say that, look at all these sinful things I got away with or these things that I did. It's simply to show you this. God is bigger than your sin. His grace knows no ends. His love is higher than the heavens is from the earth to those that fear him. Your sins will be as far from you as the east is to the west. There is a caveat to that though. When I do sin and I do make mistakes, especially of a lustful nature, I get chastised, not destroyed. I don't get exiled and cast away and cast into hell forever. But the Lord does allow me to suffer for a time, sometimes far worse than others. Terrible dreams, terrible visions, evil feelings that come over my body, the allowance of Satan to persecute me in the flesh and even in the mind. The Lord lets it be known, though he will not destroy me, and he will not cast me away, that I am his eternal son, and I am saved, confirming me by many things. He does not condone my sexual misconduct. So day by day, through the fear of the Lord, I learn to deny myself my sexual desires. My mind is renewed. New pathways form. I learn to see the world in a different way. I start to appreciate being still, simply being able to breathe, to see, to hear. And I'm able in those moments now to say, I don't think I should do that. That's not for me. No, I'm not gonna watch that. I've made more mistakes than I'd be able to count, but the Lord Jesus has still accepted me. He has called us to repent and turn from those ways and seek out life because to live with the Holy God is to be a holy son and daughter. And if you feel like you've gone too far, stop and turn back. You might even feel like it's impossible to stop doing what you're doing. But know this, the disciples asked Jesus who can enter into the kingdom of God. And Jesus responded, with man this is impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. Just because we're Christians doesn't mean we're not gonna make mistakes, we're not gonna sin, we might have homosexual thoughts, we might falter and watch pornography, we might falter and 
have a relationship outside of marriage sexually, actively in sin, actively in drug use, in violence, in mayhem. He hasn't said that we can't ever make mistakes and do those things, but he has said after we have done them, repentance. And over time, we won't make those mistakes anymore. Thank you all so much for watching another video from Straight Gate Apologetics. I hope you all are delivered of all of your lustful tendencies. You play the game of life as God has intended and your rule book is the Holy Bible. You seek to have a real relationship with a real God and a truly fantastical world of supernatural, amazing wonder. He is with you always, us always, till the end of the world. Go forth and sin no more. I'll try. God bless you.